Welcome to a five. A look back at a piece of influential technology. Do you remember buying your first cassette tape? I think so. They're rare now, but at one point they dominated music, right? Yeah, they did. Philip Townsend opens the vault to look at the rise and fall of cassettes. This was my first cassette tape, Ace of Bass, The Sign, circa 1992. Back then, before CDs and the digital world we know today, cassettes reigned supreme. Despite the frustrations of push, play, rewind, repeat, it was how we connected to the music we loved and how we loved those we connected to. So somebody got a mixtape, <laughs> they meant a lot to you. <laughs> Most of the major music companies stopped making cassettes by 2003. They were replaced by CDs as the dominant media a year earlier. And then we all know what happened next. MP3 players transformed how we accessed music, killing the CD by 2014. By then, the cassette tape was long gone. So you'd think today, with the boom of streaming music platforms like Spotify and Pandora, they'd be nowhere in sight. Well, you'd be wrong. There's a couple people out there that like it and appreciate it and good for them. Yeah. Call it nostalgia marketing, but cassette sales nearly doubled from 2020 to 2021, according to entertainment tracker Luminate. Major artists jumping on the 90s trend and releasing their albums on the old relics. An indulgence many of their fans couldn't possibly understand. They weren't born when cassettes were popular. But make no mistake, the cassette tape's respectable return is still no match to the convenience of streaming media. And even with a small boost in cassette sales, there's no sign of that changing anytime soon. For 13 News Now, I'm Philip Townsend. Where are all my Prince cassettes? Yeah. Where are they, David? I don't know. <laughs> Here in the U.S., cassette sales peaked at 442 million in 1990. Bit nostalgic.